Hello, it's Mundo Monday telling tales of tales. Is that what it's called? Tales and tales. Pet tales. Not just pets. Miss Barb is actually planning next week's Summer Quest Camp, which is going to be all about dinosaurs. Oh, do you remember this time last year, we had a very long story time video all about dragons? Dragon stories have been told all over the world, and one of the reasons for that, according to some anthropologists, uh, those are the people who study cultures, is because dinosaur bones have been found all over the world. Dragon stories may have been based on dinosaur bones, but I was thinking about that video while we were talking about different kinds of families this spring, specifically mixed families, the kind that combined one or more different cultures or backgrounds. Do you remember that there are two different families of dragons? Eastern and Western. Right, Western dragons tend to breathe fire, but Eastern dragons breathe mist and control the weather. What if you were a little dragon in a family that mixed East and West, like in this book? Gondra's Treasure by Linda Sue Park. She's the lady who wrote the uh, Sijo um, poetry that we read in April. The, the, the kind of poetry from Korea. Korea! You know, Korea in the East, like in Eastern Dragon. Anyway, illustrated by Jennifer Black Reinhardt. Gondra's Treasure. My mom's family comes from the West. Dad's family is from the East. My name is Gondra, and I was born somewhere in the middle. In the West, dragons breathe fire, Mom said. Isn't that dangerous? I asked. That's what I said when we first met, Dad said. In the East, dragons breathe mist. Mom shrugged. <laughs> Compared to fire, it seems pretty boring. Dad frowned. What did you say? Mom cleared her throat and spoke loudly. I said, pretty. Mist is pretty. There's a picture of me when I was a baby. A teeny tiny flame is coming from one nostril and a wisp of mist is coming from the other. You were adorable, Mom said. Most beautiful baby dragon ever, Dad agreed. Now I can breathe fire or mist whenever I want. Mist is great for hide and seek. But I'm not allowed to breathe fire unless dad or mom is with me. Can be useful. Both of my parents can fly. Mom has wings. Dad uses magic. Whenever I ask mom to go faster, she always says the same thing. This is fast enough, sweetie. You don't want my wings to get tired, do you? That's the problem with wings, dad says. I have wings, like Mom, but I can't fly yet because they're too small. I won't know if I have flying magic until I'm bigger. When I grow up, if I have wings and flying magic, I'll be the fastest in the family. Dad's scales are mostly blue and green. He has a few red and gold ones, too. My side of the family has bronze scales, Mom said. It's classier, not as garish. What does garish mean? I asked. Gaudy, flashy. Nothing wrong with a little flair, Dad said. I like flashy, I said. I like classy, too. Bronze, eh? Dad said. Well, whatever color they are, they're gorgeous. Mom blushed. <laughs> Thank you, dear. I'm mostly bronze, like Mom. But just the other day, I noticed that a few scales on my tail are starting to turn bluish green. Look at that, Dad exclaimed, just like your dear old dad. He was so excited that he made huge clouds of mist and it started raining in the living room. Mom's ancestors lived in caves full of treasure. What do they want with all that stuff? Dad asked. It was treasure, for heaven's sake, Mom said. Dad, yeah, everybody likes treasure. Some of Dad's family lived in lakes or rivers. The rest lived in clouds. Our treasure was a magic pearl that we could hold in one claw, Dad said. 
Just one treasure? I asked. What, you were too lazy to search for more? Mom teased. Why have more than you need? Dad said. Mom's family sometimes had to fight humans to protect their treasure. Dad's family used the magic pearl to control the weather. They provided rain when humans needed it, and when they were angry, they could send floods. I don't want to fight humans, I said, or drown them. I want them to like me. Where I come from, humans love dragons, Dad said proudly. They make boats in the shape of dragons. Sometimes they dress up as dragons and dance in parades. Do you remember uh, seeing the dragon dancers when we read about Lunar New Year? Mom sighed. I'm sorry to say that in the West, humans haven't always loved dragons, but they do love stories about us. Living in a cave with treasure sounds like fun, but so does living in the clouds and making it rain with a magic pearl. Mom, Dad, how come we don't live in a cave anymore or in the clouds? Times change, Mom said. Things aren't the same as they used to be. Besides, don't you like our house? Dad said. Of course I do. But what happened to the magic pearl and all the treasure? Again? Mom rolled her eyes. You've asked us that a million times. We told you before, remember? Dad said. Oh, that's right. We don't need them anymore. Because I'm your treasure. Best treasure ever. Dad said, and Mom smiled. Why have more than you need? So Gondra is a mix of East and West. So what kind of dragon does that make her? It makes her Gondra. Very true. Seriously though, sometimes you humans get too attached to binaries. You want things to be one thing or the other. When really, there are so many different ways that people can be. Some people are a mix of several cultures or ethnicities. No one has to be just one thing or another. It's like the girl in this story. It's called Honey Smoke, a story about finding your color by Monique Fields, illustrated by Yasina Moises. Simone once a color. Look at all the colors in the crayon box. None of them quite fits her. She asks Mama, am I black or white? <laughs> Pooh, Mama says, just like Mamas do. A color is just a word. She asks Daddy, am I black or white? Well, Daddy says, just like Daddies do, you're a little of both. But Simone still wants a color, one of her very own. At lunch, she asks her friends, what color am I? Uh, you're black like me, one answers. And now you're white like me, says another. You could be one or the other, a third says. Simone stares at her feet. No one knows her color. During recess, Simone sways back and forth on a tire swing. The black rubber stains her hands and clothes. It's not her color. Inside the classroom, Simone creates a flower. A drop of white glue kisses her skin. It's not her color either. Simone wants a color, one that shows who she is on the inside and the outside. She snuggles with the bears in the reading corner. One is the color of chocolate, the other peanut butter. She places their small hands on top of hers. Neither chocolate nor peanut butter is her color. Personally, I like them both mixed together, don't you? She has two colored pencils, one brown, the other pink. She draws a girl with one and colors her in with the other. But Simone isn't brown or pink. Simone wants a color, one that tells her story. She studies her parents during dinner. She looks them up, then down. Mama's skin reminds her of the honey from the beehives at Grandma's house. And Daddy looks like the smoke that billows from Grandpa's train. Just before she climbs into bed, Simone discovers her color. 
Mama, she says, you're like honey and just as sweet. <laughs> oh, she says like mamas do. I'll never be as sweet as you are. And Daddy, you're like smoke. You're the strongest man I know. Well, he says like daddies do. You're the strongest girl I know. But Simone knows her color. She is honey smoke. The next day she sees her color written in the clouds, in the tree leaves, and on the grass, honey spoke. And she writes it on her schoolwork, on the classroom window, and in chalk on the playground. Colors are words. Words are colors. Discover your color word, where it could be. Terracotta clay, bronze leaf, autumn gold, arctic pearl, sun quartz, brass pebble, sandstone. It's getting now a little dark. Rising sun, sugar coal, copper storm, ruby fire. Beautiful. What color are you? No matter how many different one or the others may be mixed up inside of you, one thing is sure. You are a treasure, exactly as you are.